Hello, welcome to another Toneless Landscape Oil Painting Demonstration. This is your painter-in-residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the painting I'm bringing you today is a study after Jules Dupree. Um, did this one last week. It, I don't know the title of his painting. I think I'm just calling it Landscape. Um, you'll see a few Duprees on the channel here. And uh, this is one I did a study of before. Oh my goodness, I'm thinking 2017 or 18, something like that. Um, ended up in the hands of a uh, a guy who was repping me and uh, turned out to be a... Well, he never was a good rep, but we don't need to say anything bad about him. We certainly won't say his name. How about that? Um, anyway, um, so it's out there and I was think, thinking... Wow, I really enjoyed this scene. I really wanted to do it again. And uh, I might even just for giggles look it up on the um, channel, you know. Uh, if you were interested, you could go Dupree 5x10. Um, let's just talk about it. Let's talk about some things you might care about. So, <clears throat> the underpainting here. <clears throat> um, that looks like burn number to me. And um, that worked real well. Um <clears throat> One of the reasons I like doing it, so I'm working on hardboard, sorry, clearing my throat there. Uh, working on hardboard, I like the hardboard, it's nice and smooth, and um, yeah, I like working on texture. When I do texture, I'll do texture on hardboard as well. The reason I like hardboard over, say, MDF, um, it's a little more um, resilient to um, weather conditions. Um, and frankly, I've worked with, um, with uh, ply as well. I think the hardboard the the hardboard and the ply are pretty much on the par as far as stability um some might argue with me but the reason i stopped working on ply was um it tends to warp like crazy there's a lot of tension in it i mean you got fibers going one way fibers going another way and it just doesn't really like laying flat or behaving so i got away from ply quite a while back for that reason um, and I really did enjoy working on MDF, but MDF uh, is basically, just think of it as super compressed cardboard and you're going to be, you know, on the money. It's a lovely surface to work on, though, very nice and smooth. Um, and I like working on a smooth surface. When I'm working on a smooth surface, I have to create the texture, uh, textural effects with my brushwork, yeah. Um, so... Oh yeah, we just finished our drawing. I did the drawing with, like I said, uh, burn number. Um, burn number is really good because sometimes maybe you just have the, I call it drawing, you could call it an underpainting. We hopefully are on the same page now. And um, a lot of times, like you could do the uh, drawing such underpan underpainting one day and then do your color work the next day. That's a good way to break things up. Um, but if you do do that, uh, you need a color like uh, burn number or raw number. Recently, I uh, should, probably shouldn't talk about it too much because this painting doesn't have that. This is obviously burn number, but um, I've kind of made my own slightly more opaque version of uh, raw umber using brown ochre and a little bit of black. Um, and that's given me a similar result with that quick dry. So um, but that's important because um, a lot of times I used to, like, I really still do like doing underpaintings with black ivory black but um it's such a slow dryer that if you're not it's fine if you're going to go in that same day and finish the painting um, but if you don't think you're going to be able to do that then you actually really have to wait several days maybe even a week or so um, otherwise what happens is the black paint will delaminate mm, that's your painting over it not a pretty picture yeah, uh, so people in the know, they know not to do underpaintings with uh, ivory black. Um, unless, of course, the exception would be um, you're you're doing your quick underpainting and you just go right into your color. Then everything kind of locks into one solid paint film. And it's not that ivory black is an unstable color. It's very stable, but um, because of its... Uh, you, you've got to give it a chance to dry. Um, and I, I will say, as a matter of fact, if you give it that two, two, two weeks to dry, it's very solid. You can oil it out and, and do whatever you need to do. Um, so this, uh, the sky and the Dupree, um, by the way, this will be for sale in my store. 
and I also put this in my blog and in my blog uh, usually my blog is just my own paintings but um, uh, this is you know, not you know obviously it's a study after Dupree but I won't be putting it in the NS section I thought about it but we're gonna keep the NS thing really pure really pure um, so I just felt like doing this and that's so I've had this reference my little reference uh, thing for a while I've been intending to repaint this painting for years now so um, it's very attractive little painting so pick it up in my store 2.99 yeah now um, in that blog area though I wanted to point out that uh, I'll have my reference image as well um, for those of you that might be interested in going after it and uh, um, yeah I wanted to give people some some factual meat before they go running off because they're looking for tips looking for tips when they should be painting should be painting you want to get good, but good at painting you need to paint painters become good by painting not by watching videos <laughs> that said keep watching this one you never know it might be another good tip probably will be because tips are always uh, this is tip central you know um, but that is actually one of the best tips I could give any painter you need to paint all the time um, go after small ones you know something takes you an hour and a half or so um, you know what your life is going to be so much better you're going to feel a, a real sense of accomplishment you know like you did something with your life um, if you do a painting um, today after you turn off this video it doesn't really even matter you can go after anything go after like a sepia tone you know just a couple earth tones some white some black you can always glaze it and do something else later it's infinite <clears throat> I do recommend though like having a, a folder full of images that you that are ready for you that, that inspire you that you want to paint a bunch of boards prepped right there you go grab a board get some reference get to get to look and you know it's not like you got to cleave to that reference exactly anyway who cares um, which getting back to this Dupree I was tempted this guy is not that inspiring but um, a lot of times um, oh that's the other thing I want to point out yeah the reference will be in my blog for this but it was low res it's pretty chunky but that's another thing it doesn't really matter if you have really low res images of paintings you can still make studies um, because let's face it it's the big shapes and the colors that are really the thing that make a painting uh, good you can supply your own little tw tweaky details and um, for the most part that's my approach to studies it was my approach here to Dupree um, he obviously was doing some interesting things very interesting composition on this and um, I remember reading back in the day um, I like I say I will have to revisit my um, original video which was uh, 5 by 10 um, he would get on a boat and go out in the middle of a lake or pond and this would be a painting of the shore which is a brilliant idea absolutely brilliant idea now a lot of times you get this all in a row thing but um, he did a great job with that and uh, this palette here is pretty limited the challenge here was getting some um, getting the greens flat like his were but still with a little bit of you know movement and um, so you know that flat green thing that's really uh, I think something a lot of painters uh, starting out struggle with and um, now that's the other thing I mentioned members area right um, so in the members area I give you the breakdown of my initial uh, color mixing session and my approach but yeah I'll share that with you too my uh, my lovely subscriber you don't have to be a member to get good tips and tricks here and uh, so the real key here was starting with like say my mic screen which is acrylide yellow and ivory black that's a and usually I mix that so it's not too too light or too dark um, in this case I threw a lot of like alizarin crimson into that green a lot of uh, burn umber and you can use them uh, you could use one or the other but the nice thing about the burn number in this particular is that like as bright as it might seem like painted on its own over a board in most mixes it tends to muddy things a bit it doesn't muddy things as much as um, raw umber does but raw umber too can seem very clear and uh, um, transparent and beautiful on its own 
um, but in mixes it tends to have kind of a muddying effect uh, which I use to full advantage all the time um, but I checked a bunch of reds so um, depending on the green I want to go for and you know I don't know if you're aware of this but human beings we can see so many greens it's not even funny and it's a really big part of painting so starting with that base green I will check I will make greens so um, I tend to most of the greens and most of the scenes that you're gonna want to paint they just require a lot of red in them like um, a burnt sienna that's the main reason you might even want to have burnt siennas on your palette it's just to chuck it in those greens you'd be amazed how much burnt sienna you can throw into a green mixture and still perceive it as being a green uh, try it you'll see same thing goes for uh, putting a, a, a lizard crimson if it's dark greens I like a lizard crimson in the shadows with uh, of course the black is already present in the green um, but the uh, the lizard crimson will give it a bit of a deep reddish vibration in the shadow areas and then uh, of course if I want on those greens to go cooler that's where I'll inter introduce a bit of like phthalo green so phthalo um, mostly in the shadows um, phthalo is very strong so it always needs to be balanced out with um, a lot of times uh, yeah if I'm putting phthalo green into my uh, uh, my dark greens I will definitely throw in a bunch of alizarin crimson too to kind of counteract it um, but it, the overall effect will be of a cooling um, a, a dark cool green um, there's a few spots in this painting that you see that mass of trees like where my brush is right now in the middle it got cool cooler in the bottom part there and that's one of the few spots where cool greens are making an appearance here but another thing I'll do with uh, modifying greens in sort of a cool way but bright is that permanent green light I use that all the time um, I like to use that to make muddy greens into nice brighter greens that are still sort of muddy <laughs> you can't use it straight from the tube straight from the tube you look at it and go well I'm never going to use this because it's like a poisonous electric green like um, the color of young uh, leaf shoots in the early spring you know and I'll never forget one of my first plein air painting sessions it was in this spring and I was going out painting all these electric greens you know and that uh, was not a nice looking painting now I'm sure there's ways to pull that kind of thing off especially say if you're an impressionist or whatever you know you can get into a bunch of dazzling light effects and everything's really bright but but for what I'm about I'm about more muddy um, poetic approach to painting yeah so yeah we're kind of getting close to the end here um, yeah so two studies uh, this week uh, you got the Ines one that's percolating that night scene I think it's doing pretty well um, not that I'm uh, <laughs> not that that stops me I put put I put up what I paint you know and uh, some some people like like some of them some people um, you know are waiting for something else you know but either way I should like to share I'd like to um, to get the uh, to get the work out to the peeps here so thanks for watching this video today I really appreciate it if you got some value off of watching this um, really nice scene, eh? It's lovely. Um, yeah, leave me a comment. If you're the type of person that likes to comment or will leave me comments, please do. I really enjoy that. It's it's gratifying to know that people got some value from what I do. Um, the like thing, whatever. I don't know. You know, it's it's easy to click a thumb. You can do that too if you want. Yeah. And uh, you can go to my website. Tip on over there. They got those two blogs now, so there's more content for you. And of course, there's a store, so if you got a little extra scratch, say maybe uh, you got some money back from the tax man, get yourself an original uh, M. Francis, you know. Um, there's a lot of my originals there in the store, a lot of studies uh, too, uh, which in a sense are originals as well. They're original studies. <laughs> anyway, thanks for joining me today. I will be back very soon, God willing, with another uh, video for you. Appreciate you taking the time uh, to watch this one. I know you have a lot of other things you could watch. And, uh, yeah, try to bring some value to the equation. But mostly, you know, just like sharing what I do. 
And if you ever have any questions or anything, member, subscriber, whatever, or just interested party, shoot me an email or ask it down in the comments. I'm always happy to help you with your journey as a painter or just a, even a painting appreciator. Anyway, until I come back with another video, take good care, stay out of trouble. God bless you and your family.